Hi guys, so just recently I made a video creating a partition like gift box and so today I haven't played with the Cricut in a long while so I was thinking I will make the same thing on <laughs> the Cricut. Um, I don't know if I already have a box design on there so what happens is I'll put the link to whatever my project is so you can get it for free. Um, but I'll link whatever else I might be using there and uh, those would be affiliate links which means I'll make a small commission for your purchase time sales links but my Cricut like design space um, projects are always just free you can just grab them obviously um, and hopefully pop over there sometimes people ask if you can use it in a different machine I don't know I don't know how Cricut stores like SVG or whatever the file is and if you can open it somewhere else great but um, for now, that's all I have, so that's how I do it. I have not used Design Space in a very long time. I'm sure they've done things to make it different, so I'm going to go. Next thing you'll hear is probably me working on my computer. Um, you know, as I'm, like, screen grabbing, basically. And we'll try it out. So, essentially, I'm just going to make a box, you know, with the cut so that's something like this it'll be five by seven i'll try to make it the same like inch and a half deep and all that with a couple partitions and we'll see how it goes so uh let's go over to my computer and you know fingers crossed quick interjection guys i'm sorry i forgot to mention this i kind of went into making the project um make sure that your cricut um your design space is set to work with a larger machine like the explorer um or whatever else, larger machine and maker or something like that, because you're going to need the scoring options and then the option for it to be as big as it is. And if you pick the Joy or some other smaller machine, it's not going to let you do it. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, guys, so I just started this up. If you're on a, a an Apple device, which is what I have my Air uh, MacBook Pro kind of thing, MacBook, whatever it is. Um, it's basically an app, so you just open it up. Never a free trial. They have some other things here. That's great. What I like to do, or I try to do, is... Um, ooh, you know what? It's funny. I don't like the way this is framed out. Is make a new project. Sorry that the top part's cut off. I'm going to readjust that in just a moment. And I try to, for you guys, make it work so that... It's free. So yeah, I can go into my own library and pull out things that I've paid for, but then you're gonna have to pay for it to use it, right? So we don't want that. So I always start off with some free things. You know, off the top of my head, I don't remember the sizing of my papers. Actually, I do now. Okay, so if you watch the other video, you can go back and check it out. I started with an eight by 10 piece of paper and then also an eight and one eighth by 10 and one eighth piece, right? So this here, I'm going to go over here and click on size and I'm going to unlock it because right now if I say I want eight it's going to make me an eight inch square if I just say eight and enter because it's locked so we don't want that we want to be able to manipulate it so eight by ten and I'm just gonna press enter okay so I have an eight by ten piece and then I can either duplicate this one or whatever it is that I want so I am going to duplicate this, so there's that, and then I'm going to say I want another one, and that's funny, do you just, I'm just going to hit this little duplicate button, there it is, and on this one, I'm going to mess with this, I'm going to say, okay guys, I just took a moment to readjust, again, I want you to be able to see the whole screen, and also what we're resizing this to, so this one, I'm going to resize it to 8.125, because 1 eighth is 0.125 in decimals, okay? <laughs> so 0.125 on the 10 one. So 8.125 by 10.125, press return. And let's go ahead and save this right now just because we have a little bit going. So I'm press save, and I'm gonna call it partitioned gift box. And my husband is calling me, so I'll be right back. So click save, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, sorry about that. So okay, now we have our two boxes, the 8.125 by 10.125 and then the 8 by 10. Um, this doesn't really matter because obviously you're going to have the thing and you can just grab it and use it. But what I want to do is make some score lines. I don't remember if I can just make a score line as I want here. Um, and attach it. So let me think. I want this to be basically... Okay guys, sorry. You know, I haven't made it in a box in a while. So what I'm going to do is not worry about the score lines yet. What I'm going to do is create um, 
the shapes that are going to be cut out of the corners because that'll make it easier for me to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go with shape and I'm going to grab like a skinny um, triangle like this one. And I want it to be 1.25, I'm sorry, 1.5 inches tall because our sides are one and a half inches. So I wanted to come in and cut one and a half inches tall in some areas. So um, let me see if I can do that just by this one point five and let me see if that actually translates to 1.5 because you know sometimes when you do something and you're like oh that's not exactly what I'm looking for okay and then I want to cut this guy in half so I know this seems kind of weird but basically this guy needs to be cut right down the center and I would prefer to have something like that so what happens is I will take another like shape now there might be a better way to do this I don't know this is how I do it so we have this guy and I'm going to make him also 1.5 inches tall let's change the color on this well it actually doesn't matter what I want to do is put this one right up against that guy and basically center these two so I'm going to highlight both of these guys so that they are aligned um, let's see there you go. So they're exactly the same height. And I think they're aligned the other direction pretty well. Like, that doesn't bother me at all. I'm trying to see what's going on. Maybe a little bit more over this way. Let's see. What we're trying to do right now is just... I'm highlighting that. I'm just going to move it over. To make something that's going to help us cut right in half. So what I'm going to do with these two guys is slice them. Down here at the bottom, say slice. And now I have this piece that I can just delete. I don't care about that. I have this piece that I can just delete. And now we have these two pieces that we can use. Now you see this one has a little piece left up on top because that's just what happened. But anyway, um, actually what I can do is get rid of that one, delete that. And let's make a duplicate of this one just because I like the way it looks. We're going to need these anyway. Oop, undo that. <laughs> Bring this guy back over here. And what we can do is take that guy, duplicate it again. Oh, I don't like when it makes it so you're going to grab it. I don't want to change it. I just want to grab it. And I'm going to flip it um, horizontally and then make a duplicate of that. So these guys right here are going to help us make some little cuts. Oh my gosh, you guys see how I just want to grab it. Now let's make all these a different color so we can see what we're doing better. Uh, let's make them pink just so it's different from the white background and all these guys basically are gonna help me cut a little divot just like if you're making a box like where you want to put them so I made them all long so they're gonna be on the same side should I say um, so like this guy this is our 8 by 10 uh, rectangle I suppose you could do this and then just manipulate it so it's 8 and 1 8 by 10 and 1 8 when you're done, but that's not our favorite thing to do. We're just going to have a lid and a base that's completely separate. Um, but for now, let's take this guy. And we want him to cut right in here. Let me see. Am I not at the very top yet? I feel like my... Okay. It's already set up there. Um, I just want to make sure everything was okay. I do not want to change the sizing. Oh, that drives me nuts. I'm just trying to grab it. And we are going to set it right up on the six. Inch. Sorry, guys. I was just trying to grab this. Oh, it drives me nuts sometimes when it changes the shape instead of grabbing it. But anyway, we're going to line it up. Excuse me, at six and a half. So see here, six, six and a half. Now you can also manipulate this by doing your X and Y like where you want it to be, um, which is interesting because I don't see that option anymore up here. It used to be here and you can just say, oh, this is where I want it to be. But let's see. Let's click more. Is it under more? Yep. Oh, thanks for burying it. But look at that. I have it right at six and a half and zero. And that's exactly what I want. So that's fine for that one. Six and a half and zero. And then this guy, I'm going to take it. Actually, I'm going to take this one and put it over here. And I want this guy. Oh, do not change the sizing. That drives me nuts. Actually, you can just right click on that and tell it where you want it to go. But we want to line this one up at one. I don't know if it's 
you know, by this guy or this guy. You basically want this between one and one and a half, right? That's where we want the end of that. So let's see where we're at. We're exactly at one. Perfect. Okay. And what I'm going to do is move down, take these guys with me. We're going to grab both these guys and bring them down to this bottom corner. We're essentially making our little cuts in here. So, okay, guys, sorry. I hope you don't hear my neighbor's gardener. But anyway, with these guys, we're going to flip them also. Um, so that they're facing the other direction in the vertical direction, okay? So click that one, click this one, and then again up here, click, uh, um, sorry, flip, and flip vertical. And we're essentially going to place these the way we place these um, up at top, but down at the bottom, okay? So um, let me see which one. Yeah, this guy. We're going to take him, and again, you can just arrange it, but if I'm looking at what I'm doing, I can put this down here. And again, I don't know exactly if this is, you know, it should end at 10. Let me look at more. We're at 6.5. Let's make it exactly 6.5. And then at uh, the 8.514 part is mixing me up a little. Let's say 8.5 and see where that puts us. Yeah, it could be a little bit lower. Okay, bring it down. I'm just gonna bring it down if I can grab this. Nope, <laughs> I would say it was lagging, so now when I did it, it didn't do it quite exactly. Let's put 6.5 again. Okay, that's fine. And then this guy, we're gonna take him, and again, you can just do your numbers like the x-axis I think we said we wanted at one yeah no and then eight point whatever it is um, it's, it's measuring from the top of this thing as far as the y so that's kind of annoying but let's just bring this down here manually and that looks pretty good okay so what we're gonna do is Hopefully that, I'm grabbing everything, hopefully. <laughs> I can't tell because I couldn't get all the way to the top, but it should have grabbed what's within here. And we are just going to, um, sorry guys, I just wanna make sure I'm grabbing everything. So if I come in here and let's keep it tight. So what happens is you're kind of right clicking and grabbing everything and just keep it down and I'm pulling all the way down. I don't know, I'm assuming it's gonna grab the bottom two pink triangles. And this time we're going to combine and we're going to do subtract. And you see how that came away, these areas? And then down here, same thing. Awesome. And now what we're going to do is add in our score lines. Now, again, I wish I could do a score line and a frame and just stick it together because it's going to be the same for this guy. But not really. So I'm going to need two pieces that are five inches long. So the score line up here, I'm going to save five inches. Actually, let's save a little bit. Let's go ahead and save because we don't want to lose anything. I'm sure it's fine. Um, this guy, I want it to be uh, two of them that are seven inches tall and two that are five. The five inch ones need to go this way. Um, actually, it needs to go across this whole thing. So we could have done that first or not. So actually, I need it to be eight inches long by seven so one that goes across the whole thing needs to be eight inches because this whole thing is eight inches and then just these sections that go from that point to this point right so i'm going to create a, a couple of different ones so um seven inches long and of course it didn't do it for some reason why i'm telling you oh it's thinking let's wait there it goes <laughs> so we have that one and then we're going to duplicate it we need two of that one I already put one over here for me, which is fine. And then um, I guess I'll just duplicate another one, even though it's kind of silly. I want it to be five inches long, this one. Let's change it to five inches, five, enter. And then we're going to rotate this guy. So let's rotate it, is that 90 degrees? I want it the other direction. Yep, 90 degrees. And then we're going to duplicate that. We need two of them. And I, oh my gosh, I'm so silly. I said we wanted that to be eight inches, didn't I? Let's delete that one. <laughs> Let's go back to this one and say eight inches and then we'll duplicate it. Sorry guys. I am such a silly Billy. Okay, so here what I wanna do is line this one up at one and a half inches, this eight inch score line. We're gonna go and click more and say I want it at 1.5 so that we're more accurate. 
right? Yes. And then one of these guys, I want it at also 1.5 on the x-axis. So let's click more. 1.5. Uh, in the other direction, you know, big deal, also 1.5. I mean, basically is where we want that one. I'm going to take the other tall guy and put him over here, and he should be at 6.5 inches. You saw it right there when I was playing with that, but let's go more. 6.5 and, and also 1.5. And, I'm, you know, obviously you guys you can just take this and do what you will with it. You don't have to <laughs> um, do what I'm doing. Where did that line go? Did it take off on me? Ugh. Okay, let's play with this one and bring this guy down to eight and a half basically the other one eight inch one so eight zero position that's perfect eight point five and I don't know where the other one went but did it it might have pushed to back so let me hold on we want to grab everything and we want to stick this together so I'm just highlighting everything there and we are going to attach that I don't like that my other score line disappeared on me. Do you guys see that? Where did it go? I'm just going to do it again. I don't know why I did that. So this one I'm going to take and duplicate it. You guys might have seen. I've, I'm paying attention too much over here like to what I'm doing. So let's stick that there. See? It's there now. But okay. So let's make sure it's where we want it. 6.5. 1.5. And these are the kinds of things that happen. You know, whatever. <laughs> I don't know why it took off on me. I'm going to highlight that because I still need that to attach. And there we go. So this whole thing should be one piece. When we put this in our machine, it's going to cut these areas. It's going to do the um, score lines also. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing to this one that we did here. With the same little pieces, these little cutouts, you know, and all that. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the exact same measurements because we're going to do one and a half inches all around and then that eighth of an inch that we added is going to be embedded in this top portion just like I did in the box when we did it manually okay so I'll be right back I'm going to do the exact same thing put the exact same little cuts in here and the exact same um, score lines at one and a half inches so that's all exactly the same the only difference is this middle section is going to be a, big, a bit wider for us because that's what we need it to be. So I'll be right back. Okay, now you guys know I'm not the expert at this. Uh, I just dabble. But um, when we made these little sections here, you could have just copied those a couple times so that you would have them ready for this one. All I did was go back and just like click on this. If you click on this, you can see what it was and then just duplicate it. You can just say duplicate it and then you'll get another one to work with. So you could have done it earlier. I did it afterwards. So I, I use the exact same pieces for this. Um, I will say copying the score lines, like I said, I'm just going to bring them over. Um, this paper is one eight and an eighth by ten and an eighth. This cut, although you want the exact same one and a half inches, you know, in it's going to be a little short, right? Because it needs to go all the way across to the eighth. So you can just eight point one two five, and then duplicate it from there, right? So now from there, I'll duplicate it. So I have two that are eight point one two five. This one right here needs to be. Um, uh, the 7.125 and the reason that one is 7.125 is because again that 0.125 is within the top of this not on the sides the sides are going to be exactly the same one and a half inches one and a half inches deep so we want that to make sure you have that that little bit that's extra and again just line them up on the one and a half this way one and a half this way one and a half this way one and a half all the way around and then attach them just like we did on the top one, okay? Or the base, sure, I say this is the base. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, like I said, I'm not, you know, the expert in this, but I do have my two pieces. One's going to be slightly larger than the other, but they all have one and a half inch sides. So hopefully you can just use this cut file and not even worry about making your own. But again, this is a five by seven. You want to make it a different thing, like change up the sizing, you're going to want to know how to do that yourself. I suppose if you um, highlight everything and shrink it, you know, a quarter or however, obviously you can kind of make some custom sizes that way, right? But you want to make sure everything is highlighted if you're going to do that um, and then change the sizing, right? But anyway, 
Um, we do need some matte layers. So for matte layers, you know, basically for the top of the thing, if you want to make them for the sides, you can think about those numbers. I guess I can do that right now for you guys. So let's just say matte layers. Do you want it rounded? You can do that with corner rounding, but you know, it's all squared off. I'm just going to do a square. I always pick up a square <laughs> and then I unlock it and I say, you know, five by seven, because the very top is going to be a little bit bigger than five by seven. So a five by seven matte layer should work really well. And then let's just change the color so we have something cute. Um, also, I don't really care for the gray here, but that's okay. So we have a 5x7 matte layer for the top. You want more matte layers for the sides. If you can imagine, these are 5x1.5. The other ones are 7x1.5, you know. So maybe you want to make some matte layers for that. So I'll throw in a couple just really quickly. I'll just design some uh, real quick. Uh, let's unlock that. For the 5x7... I added an eighth of an inch so we can make them an eighth of an inch smaller all around. So um, five by, let's say, uh, one and a half, 1 1.375, right? 375. That should take an eighth of an inch all around there by 4.775. Does that work? Let's see how this looks. I don't know if I'm doing this right or not. And let's see if this catches up correctly. <laughs> I'm just making up numbers off the top of my head right now. And obviously it hasn't changed the size. It's still thinking. Uh, let's wait. I pressed enter, right? I'm pretty sure I did. Uh, hello. It's still, okay, it's thinking. I don't know why it does that sometimes. Like it's taking so long. I literally have nothing up other than the Cricut Design Space and recording. <sighs> Let's let this thing catch up. I'll be right back. But basically I'm going to make you some matte layers to go on these long sides and on this outer portion. And um, again, uh, I'll be back and I'll have two for the short sides, two for the long sides. I don't know why it's thinking so long. Okay guys, so I cleaned it up. Um, you know, these things I attached, obviously, the score lines to that, the score lines to this. I also grouped this together. So that means just highlighting everything and grouping it. So that way, this moves as one piece. But I will say, this is a nice project, just a 5 by 7 If I attach everything, like, go ahead and highlight this, well, highlight this guy and this guy, and then group it, that means whenever we mess with any of the sizing, it'll all change together, okay? So I would group everything at this point also. Um, I wouldn't group them like the way they're stuck together right now because I want to move that one over, but uh, group it in a way that looks nice and visible. Like right now, I guess I can say command all and group it that way. Um, but anyway, uh, and that looks nice, right? Okay. We are going to make partitions, you guys. So it's, very, it's basically the same what I'm doing here, but we're going to make partitions just like I did the other day. And so let me think about my numbers. I'm going to start off with the basic square that's going to help me make my little partitions. And again, one one was five inches deep. Now these partitions are going to go in the base. So I know my base is five by seven. This area right here is five by seven because that's how I made it. This area in the middle is a little bit bigger. And that's where we got our box lid from that one eighth of an inch all around makes the difference that your lid fits on top very nicely. But this base is five by seven. So um, if you guys recall, I had made like glue tabs and all those kinds of things. So off the top of my head, if I have one going across here, it needs to be at least five inches long. I made quarter inch glue tabs, so we have to add half an inch for that. So I'm going to ungroup or unlock that. So let's say 5.5, .5, so five and a half inches. And then I need it to be as tall as the box. And I wanted it doubled over because I thought that looked nicer. The box is one and a half inches tall. I need at least three inches plus another set of glue tabs, which is another half an inch. So three inches plus another half. So 3.5. Oh, five, not six. And I'm going to start manipulating this just like I did over here. I'm going to add a score line right down the center. I'm going to cut away some little pieces so that the glue tabs are nice. And then obviously make all our score lines that we need. So I'm just going to do that. Again, I just kind of walk you guys through how to do that. So I'm going to make a score line that is, you know, five and a half inches wide. So I'm going to put one right down in here. 
and then cut out some notches for the glue tabs. I'm going to put another score line down here, another score line a quarter inch all around basically, plus the one down the center. Um, and then go from there. It's the same thing. Just make myself a little triangle. Then I'm going to divot out just so it looks nice in these areas, wherever it is I need that. And I'll be back, guys. Okay, guys, not going to lie. That took a lot more time than I thought, but I did learn something. So I had this white. Um, and I was like, how do you change it after you've done all these things and attached it and done these fun things? It's like impossible. Like if I click on this, it says multiples. So the multiple cuts and colors and things, and it doesn't let you, or even if you try to just highlight the one thing, you know? So I was like, color sync, what is that about? And it says drag and drop layers to consult. I'm like, drag them where? Like drag it to here. Obviously I didn't want to do that, whatever that is. Uh, let's undo that. Um, what it is, is from here. Everything that you did is here. So color sync. And let's say I did this square, but uh, now I want to take it and put it over here. It'll turn that gray color, but I don't want it there. I want it pink. So I'm going to take it back. So even though you've manipulated and done all these things and it doesn't really want to let you change the color, the reason you want to change the color is let's say I want this the same as my base paper. If it's white, and even though I can manipulate the colors when I go to cut, like put in the color paper I want, it's going to put them on different sheets because they're not the same color, right? So it's going to want to put it on a different um, matte layer or mat. Um, so it's best to try to keep things together if you can. So this is the small guy. I still want to have a divider that goes, you know, whatever other direction or however I want to do this. So I'm just going to think about this for a minute and see what it is that I want to do. Um, this one goes across the five inches. So you can put it here, you can put it here, you can put it, you know, wherever it is that you want. Um, and then you're going to, you know, make as, how many dividers you want. I'm going to make at least two. So it'll be kind of like what the project is that I showed the other day. So I'm going to make up one more and I think, that one was like three inches uh, wide. So yeah, you think you can kind of shrink this, but it's going to look different. And the quarter inch tabs are going to look different if I just take this one and try to manipulate it to work. So I'm just going to have to make a whole other one. And that's fine. No big deal. But um, I'll be right back. Okay, guys. I know each time I come back, I say, I'm not going to lie, this was a pain. <laughs> but I have it all grouped together. So when you receive it, it's going to be... Uh, just the way it is. So this is the base down here. This is the lid with matte layers. If you want to do the matte layers, you don't have to. Um, you can just not do those. And then uh, a partition that's five inches across. So that means it's going to go across the um, the five inch side, you know what I'm saying, of the box. And then one that I believe is four inches. So it'll lay however you would like. Attaching to this one and then going in the other direction four inches. Um, Again, you can play with those if you like. I, I would not. <laughs> uh, but you can create your own. Um, again, have your machine set to explore or your, um, not your machine, but this set to explore or one of the larger machines because if you do the Joy Joy Extra, it probably won't let you do them on those because of the sizing, um, some of the options. But so, you know, I already have it on Explore. And when I click Make, I just want to show you, obviously, you have the Bluetooth on. It's going to separate things out into the mat layers. And, of course, um, you know, these are bigger cuts. So these guys are pretty much on their own mat anyway. That's all the bases. And then this is your um, area if you want to do the mat layers. You can delete the mat layers earlier in the project. Or even here, you can just not do them or however. But um, really good. Okay, so I guess I'm going to send this to cut and we'll see how it works out. Hopefully it's okay. Um, but yeah, I will be back. Okay, guys, sorry I don't have my lights on because it'll glare on the computer anyway. So we are here. Um, let me turn this guy on. Haven't done that in a while. Actually, I think the last time I did, I made a whole set of tags for Miranda's Valentine's. And um, so, you know, just in February. Um... And I'm using my Explore Air, um, not my Anna Griffin one, I have that one put away for now, but this was just like a cute one that I picked up not a few, a little while ago, I have a video on it. But anyway, um, and then, you know, these are larger pieces of paper. You can probably get by with an A2 size piece of paper. You're going to have to lay it out just so because um, the Cricut doesn't like cutting on that area. And so if you have 8.5 by 11, it should work. It shouldn't be a problem, but you're going to have to put your paper over a little bit on your mat so that you can still get that cut because again it's eight by ten and the other one's eight and eight eighth by ten and eight so 
even though this thing's telling you you want to use 12 inch paper, you can get it done um, with a different one. But I do have some of this paper that I've had for a long time, Recollections cardstock, and I thought, you know what, I might as well use this. And there's plenty of this blue one right here. So I'm going to use this. But again, you can definitely get this cut on 8.5 by 11 paper. Um, these are some inexpensive uh, mats that I got on Amazon that I think I've done a review on before. I just put an extra little sticky just in case. And then, you know, you just go. So hopefully it'll find it. I don't know if this is attached to my Cricut Air. There you go. And click continue and then follow along as you need to cut, right? So. I'll be back, guys, before I get too far. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is such a mess. I haven't played with this in so long. Don't forget to put your um, scoring tool, if you have a scoring tool. I mean, you're going to need it. Um, I guess you could do this without the scoring tool, if you don't have it, or if you don't have that ability. Um, and then just do your score lines afterward. But if you have a scoring tool, you definitely want to pop that into A, and then B should be your cutting tool. So, all right. I'll be back. I know this is like the worst, guys. Um, I was frustrated. I'm not going to lie. It only took maybe an hour, though, to create it. But anyhow, um, let's see what this looks like. This is my first piece. <sighs> How funny. Okay. Look at that. Not bad. Um, I do have some of my matte layers. The last one I'm going to put through is um, the matte layers. And I'm going to use some of this. I think it's called My Favorite Things from... Oh, just called Favorite Things. Yeah, probably not my favorite things. That's a whole other company, isn't it? Uh, it's cute. I like the little pink stars on the back, but uh, again, you can separate out. If you want the matte layer to cut from this and then the other two to cut on the other side, you know, the Cricut kind of cuts sharply anyway, so I don't think it really matters what's on the front or the back. It's going to look the same for the most part. Um, so I'm probably going to use this and maybe I'll flip it um, for some of the matte layers to be the opposite side. But anyhow, or you can just manipulate your machine to cut that way, right? Um, but I'll be back. I'll keep running them through. Okay, because I'm a crazy person, I'm just sitting here by myself. Another thing you can do is while you're still like on the mat, um, if you wanted to, like knowing that maybe you're going to have partition here, partition here, maybe use your writing options to write something cute on the inside of the box, right? That's something you can think of. Now, generally, I fold away from the score lines. Like, these are the score lines. So, I would want it written on this side. But, I mean, if you want to go ahead and write it and fold it up this way, that's fine too, right? So, you can have something cute that your pen will write for you. And it'll be there when the person opens it up. How cute is that? Just another idea. Or even on the matte layer. I mean, so much to do. But anyway, one more set of cuts and I'll be done. <laughs> you guys, I'm so funny. I was like, oh, let me put my computer away. This is almost done cutting. And then I closed it. And, hello, it's cutting. <laughs> <laughs> but it still continues, so that was good, but I don't recommend closing your computer while you're still doing this uh, with your cuts. So there we go. Matte layers, ready to go. And hopefully this works out, guys. If it does, then I'll be very happy with that time spent, and hopefully you guys don't have to manipulate it. You can just go for it and be happy that it works out for you. This was kind of crazy. <laughs> um... And you might say, why don't you just make the cut lines like these other cut lines with the cut line options that Cricut has? I don't want to pay for them, and I don't want you to have to pay for them. So I always try to find the free ways of doing this. So that's why I had to like manipulate other shapes to help me make a cut or whatever it might be. So that's why I did it that way. But yeah, if you have paid for access, then definitely use your cut lines, you know, big deal. Um, I just don't have them, so I don't want to make you guys pay for them either. So, just like yesterday, or whenever it was, was it yesterday? No, it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before, I think. Um, we're just going to fold these guys. Glue tabs out. Um, this worked out really well. It just was a little more work than I really wanted to kind of film as far as walking you guys through it, but it's the same thing. Just, I put, you know, I made a little triangle and I just carried it there, right where I needed it to be. And that's how I manipulate these pieces. I'm gonna do these first because I do want these to be stuck together before we move on. And actually, I can probably just stick these together with some tape because we're gonna glue them down anyway. So let's stick them together with some tape. So I guess I didn't have to prepare them, but um, I'm just gonna go down here down on the very side and back up here even though I don't need to put it on both sides it just needs to be on the one stick those guys together that's on the inside okay so this is essentially this guy and this guy is this guy and I made it four inches I think I, I guess I made it four inches yesterday too I thought that was different I was like oh, I'll make it a little bit different but apparently it's the same <laughs> so again just sticking these guys together 
on the inside. Really get those stuck down. We'll need those later. We have these two guys. So again, one is eight and one eighths, the actual dimension by 10 and one eighths. And when I was actually putting this together, I kept forgetting about some of those dimensions. Cause even though they're one and a half inches deep all around, there's no difference between the top and the bottom. The difference is here in this area and that's what makes it bigger or smaller so you can put the lid on. Um, I had to remember that when I went to put the other score lines. Um, just, you know, do it one and a half inches from the edges if you're, or whatever, one inch or whatever it is you're deciding to do. It will be kind of fun to manipulate this later though because right now I have it all grouped so if you guys want to reduce the size of it from like, you know, however much on one edge to another, it'll all come in or get larger at the same rate and I think it'll still look cute obviously it's just gonna be a funky size whatever it is that you decide to reduce it or manipulate it as um, but it'll be cool I'm trying to see and I probably should check this out before but I think yeah this is the matte layer one this is the lid as you can see there's an edge where if I took this over here it's gonna be exactly five by seven and that would be the base see to right on the the score lines so the one that you have a little extra that's your lid and I'm going to put this guy, I love this design, it's so cute. And I'm doing this really quick guys, so I spent enough time probably confusing y'all and <laughs> going through the numbers, but hopefully you can kind of see how you can develop your own things. Again, if you pay for access and you have a cut line that you can manipulate, then use the cut line, that'll make it very easy. <laughs> but I don't have that and I'm not gonna have it because I don't pay Cricut. Okay, let's see. They always come out with something different and new and ditching their old product, and I just, I don't like that. So, I don't support that. Okay. So, let me go ahead and put the rest of these guys down. Like I said, I'm going to use the other side. And like I said, with the Cricut, when it's cutting, it doesn't really look different. This is where it cut down into. This is the back side of it, and it looks pretty much the same, right? So, I don't mind just flipping these guys and sticking them down. You guys, we're almost done, so hopefully you enjoy this uh, cut file because it took... A little frustration and time but um hopefully it'll work for you guys i should pay attention to what i'm doing okay let me stick these last two down and then we'll assemble our box and that's it okay, guys so we have these guys we have our box base the box lid lid is pretty much already decorated so all we're gonna do here is attach these oh you know the other day we were talking about glues all right all whenever we make videos people or live videos for some reason um, people always want to ask about glue. This bottle I've had for a while and it was just here in my stash and I went to use it because my other one emptied and it was so watery <laughs> and again you know the way it was delivered and if it was freezing maybe outside and then it got inside and it got warmed up so I just shook it really well and it's better now so it might have separated because it's been sitting there for so long I don't know but all I know is it was very watery and it came out like water, liquid. So, you know, just if you have a new bottle, maybe give it a good shake before you actually try to use it. Um, maybe that's something to keep in mind. Anyhow, so we have this guy. We're going to glue our tabs in. I mean, that's pretty accurate. Obviously, we made it on the Cricut, so the cut lines are going to be straight and smooth and all that. But, um, you know. I don't know. I was eyeballing some of these things, just to be honest. Um, on some of the score lines, I can put like 0.25, and that's where I want it to be, you know, and on the X and the Y or whatever. But some of them I kind of eyeballed. So there's our lid. How cute is that? I'm going to do the same thing with the box base. Just glue it together, and then we'll put in our partitions, okay? So I'm just going to go around and glue our glue tabs, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we can try this out and see how it fits, and hopefully that's correct. Cause again, I had to put my own numbers in. And then we go from there, right? So, looks pretty good. One and a half inches deep. Again, manipulate these things however you would like. Obviously, as large as the paper that you have, right? That it'll cut into. But there we go. So, very much the same as yesterday's or the other day's design. And then this guy, um, I put in this one first whenever I did my design the other day because... Um, It, this long piece needs to go underneath these guys. Hopefully that makes sense. These glue tabs, right? See how that long piece needs to go there. So I kind of eyeball where that is with both of them. And then we'll go from there. I might mess with my numbers a little bit. Because remember I told you that this... I don't want it to be the exact same height because it'll be right at the edge of our box. It's okay. It's not the biggest deal. But let me put this here and have an idea where this needs to be. If that's there, this is here. Is that good? 
Maybe a little bit more over this way. Actually, that works out really well, so that's fine. Okay. So, whatever I think is straight at that point. Between this guy here. Alright, I'm going to hold that down and then we'll glue this guy in, okay? And it can be up here, it can be wherever. You can do two of these if you want another partition and another one. Two of this guy if you want, like, whatever, however, however you want to play with those. I'll be right back. I'm going to hold that there, hold it down here, and hold it against here. Okay. Next one, again, cut as many as you like. You can uh, create your own. Again, just one and a half inch tall. And then doubled, so that's three inches with half inches of glue tap because it's a quarter and a quarter. And then, you know, whatever dimension you like. I'm going to put it right in the center like the other one, or as much in the center as I can. I'm just eyeballing this. And I'm going to hold those down, and I'll be right back. So again, holding this glue tab against here, against here, and then the one down at the bottom. Okay, guys, so this is yesterday's. Um, this was 300 GSM paper, 110 pound. This is just, you know, cardstock from Michaels. It probably is 85 pound, I would say. So they definitely have a different feel to them, but you can cut whatever you want on your Cricut, whatever works, you know. And there it is, guys. And, you know, I didn't make matte layers to go in here, but if you wanted to, you can design them yourself. I mean, you can know that this is probably five by five by three, because this is the four inch section. So maybe something that's a little bit smaller than five by three, and then these guys are roughly two and a half by four in each section here. So you can make some matte layers to go down in there too, if you would like, and then there you go. So I took the work and did it for you, but it was not super easy, <laughs> not the greatest, but uh, you know, something you can think about doing. Uh, thanks for watching guys. I'll have the links for any of the products I might've used. I'll also have the link to um, the project itself. I'll try to pop some pictures in there because I know whenever you um, add something like that, you can add pictures and you can even have some instruction if it needs it. I think it's pretty straightforward, but you know. Who knows? Um, all right, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know if you enjoyed this tutorial. I know it's probably a little convoluted and a little, you know, whatever, but that's how it is when I work with the Cricut stuff. So thanks for watching. I will see you all at the next one. Bye now.